It's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and I was asked to make this video, but I feel like I need to preface this a little bit first. We're going to be talking about what research is out there for semi-glutide, GLP-1 medications, and orthodontics tooth movement, and it's very, very, very little. But I feel like you need to know about it because I can pretty much guarantee you if you're in a semi-affluent to affluent area, the vast majority of your adult patients who are aesthetically conscious and they're getting orthodontics, they're assessed probably aesthetically conscious, are on this. And they're probably not putting it on your medical history because a lot of people are getting this in a very freaky ways. There's a lot of freaky ways to get this. now. You can get it from your doctor, but in order to get it, your, your Wegovi, your Manjaro, your Trezep, I'm mixing the generic names with the other ones. Um, there's you know brand names, but the brand names are these just, the, it's the same darn thing. There's different generations, it's just the pen distribution. You can also get it compounded from a zillion online pharmacies, every little weight loss clinic, every little corner spa, every little hair salon. You can get it pretty much everywhere compounded and you inject it yourself and peep everybody's doing this everybody's doing this and nobody's fessing up about it and nobody because people are worried are putting it on their health histories so i almost feel like you need to have and it's not on your generic health history if people say medications they don't put stuff down that they don't think is related to dentistry they just don't so you have to ask so i almost feel like this needs to be an additional and you have to say GLP-1 semi-glutide medications like blah. Some people take it for weight loss. Some people take it for metabolic syndrome. Some people take it uh, for diabetes. Some people take it just for cosmetic reasons. Pretty much everyone in Hollywood is on it and pretty much anyone who's everyone that has a semi-decent income is probably on this unless you're already a triathlon runner and even those who are are taking it. So you'd be surprised who's taking it and I know tons of people taking it. So anyways, I just wanted to preface that if you're not aware of pretty much everyone taking this and probably all your neighbors and friends, your head is in the sand. It is very easy to get. It is not illegal. It is legal. and something that everyone is taking but yet hasn't been studied for dentistry is something that you need to be aware of so let's talk a little bit about what it does and then we'll go into some of the research um, and i found very little having to do with orthodontics um, when i started digging into the research and if you don't know how to actually look up research you don't have to have a pubmed subscription to look up research there's a fair amount of research that's just readily available on google if you want to just look up research only i'm not talking about blogs i'm talking about actual research by scientists all you do is put in semi-glutide or glp-1 agonist or glp-1 peptide it's just a protein that's naturally produced in one's stomach that you stop producing when you get older this is a natural thing a natural thing so for those of you who don't think it's not natural it's quite natural um, so put that in so put that in GLP-1 comma scholar comma orthodontics or GLP-1 comma scholar comma dentistry and it'll bring up all the scientific articles and so I've kind of started scrolling through of them and I really found very little having to do with orthodontics. I found like two. <laughs> so I found one that was Angle Orthodontist, which obviously it's a pretty recent publication, 2021. Um, it was on mice. So nothing's on humans yet. That's the thing. But yet people have been on this for over 20 years. It's been around to the point where it's generic now. However, a lot of people are on compounded very, very low microdoses. Not everyone's on the massive doses that your Ozempic, your Wegovy, and your Majaro and are on because in order to get those, you have to be really ill already. You can get it for a cosmetic or just if you're just slightly overweight um, in the compounded, which is a way, way, way lower dose. Um, okay, anyway, so this was in mice, this Angle Orthodontist 21, January 91. You can find it, look for it yourself. Basically, they are noticing that, granted, it's so hard to see if the doses are the same in mice and humans, but they're saying it's potentially inhibiting teeth movement, you know, and bone turnover. Something to keep in mind, something to keep in mind, because if I had a patient that was on this and they were on this medication, uh, I ain't doing an express or a, a light treatment or a moderate. We're doing it comprehensive. So you, you're going to have to take things a lot slower because when things are slower to turn over, you often can get root resorption. I'm not saying this causes root resorption, but in 
other medications which show changes in turnover, like bisphosphonates, weird things happen in orthodontics. And if you're getting weird outcomes or things not tracking and you don't know why and the patient's wearing them, well, maybe it's this. So I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it's not. There's no studies in humans yet. I found another one. A lot of them are more periodontal related and it looks like they've done a little bit more with perio because we all know that um, people who have diabetes are more likely to have periodontal disease and these medications help with diabetes, which therefore can help with periodontal disease. So those were all pretty favorable. There was a lot more research on that, but very little on tooth movement. I found another one, Journal of Diabetes and Its Complications. Sounds pretty, I don't normally read this journal. It's not a dental journal, but March 2020. And they talk about it inhibits the PKC beta-2 phosphorylation to improve the oxygenic differentiation potentials of something, uh, HP, blah, 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 LMNOP, in the ACE microenvironment. <laughs> I don't know what the heck this means, but they're talking about it. It affects the osteogenesis. Again, this was not in humans. So, um, but I found two studies affecting osteogenesis with this. Of course, nothing on humans, again. Um, I did find a couple of blogs, um, just from orthodontists, just talking about um, with diabetes that you're welcome to come on in and you know, get a consult, so that's good to know. Um, but otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much all that was out there. Um, there is something in the Washington Post. What if, I actually wanted to read this article, but it has a paywall and I refuse to pay it. But what if Ozempic is the new orthodontia? I'm like the new orthodontia. I think they're talking about people giving GLP-1 medications to their kids instead of getting braces for aesthetics. Mm, it's possible. It's definitely happening. So, um... That's pretty much all I've got. But I mean, I think if you don't ask about this medication, patients are most likely, unless they're on the prescription medication, they're not gonna tell you about some compounded thing that they got at their hair salon or at some corner bodega because that is how easy it is to get prescriptions for this or online people because it doesn't really have a brand name. It's just compounded medication that you inject into your stomach every few days. So. I just wanted to bring it up because I think it's something, given the very limited research that's out there, that's significant. And I certainly, if I had a patient on it, would be thinking, I gotta take things slow and low just to play it safe. When there's nothing wrong with doing that in all patients, you can always take things slow and low. But if they're pushing you to do things fast, 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 do express, do light, do this, gotta be done by this date, maybe it's not a good fit. And I mean, I think this is more for your adult patients. I think there's probably very few teens that are on these. I mean, there, you de there definitely are teens that are on these. And I mean, I'm all for it. If you read the actual research of these medications, just overall health, assuming you're not taking high doses, it's freaking phenomenal. There is enough research out there that's showing that this is like literally a life-changing medication. It's going to prolong lives. It's going to do so much stuff. So I'm all for it. But anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate messages for posting this, but I feel like someone had to do it. All right, thanks.